C'est en effet une très vieille histoire. Une histoire qui remonte exactement qui à quand Qui remonte à 1896. Et ça s'est passé comment Mais savoir cette histoire, oui. bon, ça a été mon sort, si vous voulez. Oui, Hollywood Et... n'avait pas encore du tout de développement. Ah non, à ce du tout, du tout. December 28, 1895, in a dark room of the Grand Café in Paris, the Lumières present the first public demonstration of their new invention, the Cinematographe. This screening marks the historic debut of the first reliable method to project motion pictures. Nine months prior, on March 22nd, at the Société d'Encouragement pour l'Industrie Nationale, Auguste and Louis Lumière had revealed their Cinematographe at a private screening to a group of friends and colleagues. Among those invited are engineer and inventor Léon Gaumont and his 22-year-old secretary, Alice Guy. Ça m'a paru extraordinaire. Ça m'a rempli d'admiration. C'était la naissance du cinéma. Emile and Marie Guy, a French couple living in Chile, are the parents of four children, Louis, Julia, Henriette, and Marguerite. On July 1st, Alice Ida Antoinette Guy is born in the Parisian suburb of saint mandé Her father promptly returns to Chile to attend to his business affairs. Alice is nurtured by her grandmother with love, attention, songs, and stories. Marie returns to take her daughter to Chile. In Valparaiso, Emile tends to his book selling and publishing business. Marie assists Emile and tends to her charitable work, while Alice learns to read French and speak Spanish. At the age of six, Alice joins her sisters at a convent boarding school. Emile and Marie lose their eldest child to illness. Shortly after, the Guise moved to Paris. Alice's sisters leave home. Then another tragedy. Emile dies, leaving Marie and Alice to fend for themselves. Alice learns that the Comptoir General de Photographie is seeking a secretary. She's granted an interview with its owner, Monsieur Richard. Et on m'a dit, oh, Monsieur Richard n'est pas là. Alors, quand euh, la personne a vu ma déception, elle m'a dit, mais vous pourriez peut-être voir Gaumont. Il n'était pas à ce moment-là le chef de la maison. Je me suis présenté chez Gaumont. Il m'a dit, oh, votre recommandation est excellente, mademoiselle, mais euh, la place est importante. J'ai peur que vous soyez bien jeune. Alors, je lui ai dit, oh, mais monsieur, ça me passera. <rire> <laughs> Alice gets the job and supports herself and her mother. Richard advises Gaumont to purchase his company. He agrees. 
Among Gaumont's initial investors are renowned astronomer Joseph Fallot and world-famous engineer Gustave Eiffel. Inventors and manufacturers in Europe and the US compete to solve the problem of capturing and projecting moving pictures and to create a commercially viable system. Léon Gaumont is close with Georges Demény's 60 millimeter camera. But the Lumière brothers win the race and become known as the fathers of cinema. Alice, inspired by the Lumière screening, thinks something better could be done than documenting daily life. Why not use film to tell stories? Alice Guy writes, directs, and produces one of the first narrative films ever made. Alice is one of the first to utilize many film techniques, including close-ups, hand-tinted color, and synchronized sound. Guy resigns from Gaumont to accompany her husband to the U.S. Alice returns to filmmaking and founds her own company, where she directs and manages all aspects of production. Following a two-decade career in two countries, comprised of a thousand films that she wrote, directed, or produced, Alice disappears from filmmaking. Hollywood était encore une ville où sur les portes on mettait ni chien ni cinéaste. My name is Pamela Green and I work in the entertainment industry. Some time ago I saw a short segment on a TV show about women pioneers in cinema. One of the women was Alice Guy Blaché. I was surprised. Why had I not ever heard of her? How could such an important figure in the birth of cinema not be known? I was determined to do something about it. But first I had to find out more. Have you ever heard of Alice Guy Blaché? I'm a filmmaker. I've never even heard about her. No, no idea. Never. I had actually heard of Alice Guy Blaché. I've never heard of Alice before. I never even heard of her name. No. <laughs> yes, I had. Never heard about her. I've read a lot of books about movies and written a bunch of them and never heard her name. I'd heard of her with when, when uh, no, I'd never heard of her. It's unbelievable to be a film director and as old as I am. <laughs> And to be a woman, and I've never heard of her. I'm floored that we don't know about her. I mean, I think people will think you're making it up. There's I have a... never heard of no, Alice Blusher. No, Blusher. I, never I, don't I don't know, know anything no. about her. No, no, absolutely not. I, I, mean, I don't recall the hearing about her. I've never heard of her. Never heard of her. I've never heard of a woman doing that. No. Never. I don't think that today we are teaching Alice Guy Blaché in school of films in France, but she's French. She might be really one of the very first directors in the history of film. She has a body of film production that outpaces Edison, the Lumières, Melias. I teach at NYU and my students invariably always say the same thing. Why have I never heard of Alice Guy Blaché? She's just amazing. Anything about her is of crucial importance because the history is disappearing so rapidly. And it's, all, it's over a hundred years ago. One could say Alice is important to film history for all of the obvious reasons. Starts her own company, directs, writes. She is the producer extraordinaire, but that's not the best reason. Alice Guy Boucher proves how wrong we often are. Women couldn't do it, women wouldn't do it. Elle doit être connue parce que pendant très longtemps on a eu facilité à la mettre dans l'ombre. How did she get forgotten? How come she got lost in the shuffle? There are open questions to be researched. Every time you look at another document, you find a new tiny piece of information that may lead you in a completely new direction. Are your descendants alive now? My name is Tatiana Pedro. Alice Guy had two children, uh, Simone and Reginald. Reginald had two daughters, Regine and Adrienne, and Regine Blasche Bolton is my grandmother. So Alice Guy is my great great grandmother. I knew that she worked for Gamont. I had no idea that she lived in the States. 
for Bob Channing. My name is Pamela Green and I'm doing a documentary about Alice Guy Blachet. Your wife might have been her granddaughter, Adrienne Channing. Where are her papers, where are her documents, her books, her scripts? The Alice Guy Blachet papers were in Mill Rift, Pennsylvania with Alice Guy Blachet's daughter-in-law, Roberta Blachet. Papers seemed to be in a bit of jeopardy because it was quite humid. I contacted a generous patron who invited her daughter to join her in providing the money to buy them for the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Arizona. Sorry I missed your call. I was riding my motorcycle to vacation Bible school. My first book was called Early American Cinema. As a result of that, I got hired by the American Film Institute to work on preparation of the American Film Institute catalog. And that's when I first became aware of um, women filmmakers, because I was indexing all of the early trade papers, and I noticed how many films were directed by women. The reviewers made no reference to this. It was just considered obvious. They didn't consider it important. It wasn't anything special. And so I suddenly realized, hey, there must have been a lot of women filmmakers. And then I came across Alice Guy, of course. As part of my work, I got to know Simone, Alice Guy's daughter. She had written to me or to the American Film Institute asking about her mother's films. And I was able to tell her the one or two films actually at the Library of Congress. I was sort of intrigued by her and I said, could we meet? She lived in a little township in New Jersey. Simone was very generous. She gave me a number of photographs. She also gave me a wonderful little canola. It's a series of photographs that if you run on a machine, it appears to be moving. And it shows a woman who maybe is her mother and maybe not, we really don't know. I think there's more, I just believe it. I might not have it or it might not have translated and came here. Don't worry. Yeah. This is it. The remains of the family artifacts. Can I, is it okay? Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Wow, I think it's a Legion of Honor. I don't know whether it's a souvenir piece or whether it yeah. has any value. Okay. This was Alice's. Oh, yeah. She probably did a lot of her, her scripts and writing. That's why it's all worn out. This is her opera glasses. Hey, her eyes touch those. This was her award. If it wasn't for people like you, she'd just remain buried. Oh, there's Alice. Mm -hmm. I have like about four or five other boxes. I didn't see any Alice in there. Show us one box. One box, you better make reservations. These are Alice's negatives. Huh. I'm glad that we looked. I could let you take these and you don't even have to give them back. No one's going to ever care. Honestly, nobody really cares. Clearly, there was work being done um, in terms of writing about her work. Anthony Slide, the Victor Bashi book, Alison McMahon, who was researching and identifying Alice Guy Blachet films in Europe and the US. Why isn't Alice Guy Blachet known? There weren't enough of her films available to be seen to evaluate what she had done. So it kept going back and forth between you need to have more films and who is gonna identify them in the archives. How were those films going to be restored? I began to focus on preservation efforts. It says animated portrait shot by L and A Lumiere. Does that mean Louis and Auguste Lumiere? even though it doesn't look like her. It's her handwriting. It's speculated that that might not be her. Yes. Who else could it be? 
All of the local law enforcement agencies call me the face guy. I've actually reviewed over two million faces. You asked me to review a video clip and compare it to see if it possibly could be the same person. Those are the oldest images I've reviewed ever. And I used a holistic and a morphological approach. There were certain nuances of her face that I could recognize. The upper eyelid comes over her eyelid, so her eyelids kind of disappear. When a person smiles, the cheekbones come out, so you can kind of get a comparison there. And this gives me a view of this earlobe, so that I can get a shape of the ear. And now you have all these characteristics in this video that are unique to her. Little puffy parts underneath her eyeball that comes up when she smiles big. The way her cheeks become very pronounced. Look at that, that's absolutely spot on. In my professional opinion, that is Alice on the video. J'aurais beaucoup aimé être actrice parce que j'avais des amis qui s'occupaient de théâtre. Mais alors j'avais un père qui me disait Ah non, jamais. <rire> actrice. Mon père a dit J'aime mieux te voir morte. <rire> Vous savez ce que c'était que la bourgeoisie à ce moment-là J'avais besoin de gagner ma vie. J'avais un ami qui était justement le neveu de la créatrice du Sacré-Cœur. Ça a été, je dois dire, mon premier amour. Mais il avait 75 ans. <rire> Quel âge aviez-vous J'avais 18 ans. Oh, je l'aurais épousé volontiers. J'adorais cette femme. Alors, il a dit, il était à ma mère. Et je crois que la meilleure chose pour aller, ce serait d'apprendre la, la scénodactylographie. C'est une chose nouvelle. Elle peut euh, être secrétaire dans une maison, etc. Et en effet, euh, j'ai appris assez vite. Secretaries, stenographers, those were leading professional women of the day. That was a real sort of breakthrough for women that they could work in offices. Just as women had a new freedom with bicycles, with a new medium like photography and cinema, that opened new possibilities for women. To be a secretary was a very fine upper middle class job. Is she wearing a corset? Of course she's wearing a corset. Women climbed mountains wearing corsets. They could certainly direct a movie wearing corsets. She looks like somebody who's stylish but also intelligent. One of the people you should talk to is Cecile Starr. She organized an exhibition of Alice Guy Blachet's films in 1985 at the Museum of Modern Art. I had held off asking the Museum of Modern Art to do a program. They were quite interested. Having their name made it easy for me to get the films out of the Library of Congress and Eastman House. I don't think the museum was aware of Simone Blachet. I called her and I thought, I have to really give this everything I've got because this is as close as you can get to Alice Guy Blachet herself. Simone had so little ego, all of her energy went toward mother, that mother had really been an ace performer throughout her life, even after the mother stopped making films. She wanted some recognition for her mother, and that's what her mother wanted, was some recognition. I had a student named Maxine Halloff. She has records of things that nobody else has from that period. She had gone out to New Jersey and interviewed the daughter. I think Maxine Halloff is still alive on the West Coast in Santa Monica. Did you ever interact with Alice's daughter, Simone Lachey? I tried to get in touch with her. I think I did talk to her. It's interesting how she found herself behind the camera, um, how she even became aware of a camera. Mais je ne connaissais rien de la photographie, absolument rien, parce que je savais bien qu'il y avait des bains et des plaques, mais le maniement de tout ça, je l'ignorais absolument. Il a fallu que j'apprenne tout ça. The Gaumont Company manufactures and sells cameras, optical devices, and photographic materials, including the Kenora, manufactured by their friends and colleagues, the Lumières. 
Alice shares an office with Léon Gaumont and meets with scientists, inventors, and entrepreneurs while assisting in the selling of equipment to professional and amateur photographers. When does cinema begin, okay? When is it experimental? The early filmmakers are like the punk rockers of cinema. The rules really hadn't been written yet. They were just out there doing whatever they wanted to do. They already were pining for a technology which would allow them to see remote places. Film companies sent cameramen around the world. Most of the films that were made were attractions. It's only later that these attractions began to be woven into stories. And LSG was there at the beginning. It was a revolution, not only technology, but in entertainment. Anything that was new under the sun could be found in Paris. Building the Eiffel Tower is a technical gesture, but it is also a, a cinematic gesture. The history of early film is tied to people who are not just creative, but are business people. They're kind of the Steve Jobs of their own era. Hi, Maxine. I, I remember now. Yeah. When should we get together? I wanted to know everything that happened during that period. You found Simone Blaschet? Oh, I called her and said I was doing research on that time and that her mother was a, a very important filmmaker and I'd like to interview her. I have a lot of footage, but I don't have everything. The Ampex tape, which I can't play because they've been sitting dormant for some time. You have to take it to a laboratory. That's a Great. good idea, right? When are you going to do it? Oh, hi. I'm wondering if you guys transfer your magic tapes. Would they be able to do it right away? This is old. How do you get transferred? Well, I don't want to. Yeah, I might actually break the tape. Point 360 may have an archive person. These are unseen tapes. I want to get it transferred immediately. Is it going to show up on the monitor? Oh my god! Is it now rewinding? Yeah, it did go into an air. Sorry, I gave it a shot. Uh, yes, two ways to transfer humanic tapes. Most of the companies did that because there was a lot of... It's going to go right now. They it's going to go. This is so stressful. You can see it, and then it's gone. It won't transfer. You'd have to please come to DC video. So much of this gunk got into these guides, and it just won't move. I think we hear that squeaking. Yep, automatic oven. We're going to put the tape in the oven, and we're going to run it, probably come in here Saturday night, and turn it off, and let it cool down. And then Monday morning, we'll put it in this machine and digitize it into the Mac. Sometimes, even the tape has to be baked twice. How does one have a sense of cinema when there was no cinema? Dominique est arrivé à la maison présentant un appareil. Et Gaumont, qui était un homme de science, tout de suite reconnu la valeur de cette invention et il a mis en marche une fabrication. Et nous sommes allés dans la, à une société qui était, je crois, la société d'encouragement de, aux sciences. Et là, nous avons trouvé les lumières qui avaient tendu un drap et qui tournait un petit appareil. Nous sommes revenus enthousiasmés de l'invention, mais très déconfits, puisque déjà le cinéma était en route. Have you ever heard of Alice Guy Blaschet? It's the name of a screening room in the school, but I've never heard of her. Uh, we are here in the Société d'encouragement pour l'industrie nationale. Come on, we are going where the cinema is born. Almost everything is like in 1895. Did she keep any of the papers at that time? Or? She had a book of clippings and she gave it to, uh, I think it's a Cinematheque Française. We wanted to look at her film. Yes. But unfortunately, we couldn't get a machine that would She started out as secretary to Leon Gaumont, and I started as the, as the secretary or assistant to Roger Corman. I, I felt an immediate kinship with her, 
And I always wanted to know, how did she make that leap? Et j'ai proposé à M. Gaumont de faire quelques scènes de cinéma. Il m'a dit, oui, c'est une affaire de jeune fille, en effet. Eh bien, mon Dieu, vous pouvez essayer, mais à une condition, c'est que votre courrier n'en souffre pas. Il y avait un terrain avec une petite terrasse bitumée. Nous avions simplement un pied qui servait comme un pied photographique, qui s'en allait de tous les côtés. On tournait à la main. Et là, avec mon caméraman, j'ai fait mon premier film qui s'appelait La Fée au chou. The Cabbage Fairy combines fairy tale and folklore. Newborns are found in cabbage patches. même pas des scénarios à ce moment-là, c'était des petites histoires que je fabriquais comme ça, n'est-ce pas? She got a few of her friends together. They used the garden as background. They had a man they knew. He painted beautiful friends. And they asked him whether he'd paint these cabbages, and those were the props. Look at the films being made, train coming into a station, waves breaking on a beach. Who cares? They're just boring subjects. The cinema could have died at that moment and nobody would have noticed. You really needed people like Alice Guy to come in and show you there was more to the cinema than just a stock shot. The Cabbage Fairy is a great success, which prompts her to retell the story in later films. She made that leap and she realized we could tell all kinds of stories. Gaumont names Alice head of production. She supervises the studio's output of demonstration films used to sell Gaumont cameras. There were basically just the two companies that were really seriously working on industrializing the cinema in France, and they were Pate and Gaumont. Was it so new that it wasn't that shocking to people that she was doing it? Many people thought cinema was going to have a brief flurry of attention and then it was gonna go away. And that's probably what got Guy her important position. She wasn't really an American director, she wasn't really a French director, and she was a woman, she kind of fell through the cracks. We've written an incomplete history and that's what we've used for the last 50 years of cinema studies. And now that we're learning more about people like Alice and others that haven't been written about, instead of making them a priority, we're still preserving Metropolis 20 times. Archivists and preservationists and historians are looking at a lot of work that has been neglected. And so now that we have a chance through these digital restorations, we can see how sophisticated these films were. Especially with Alice Guy's films, we're seeing just how magical and emotionally engaging they are. Even though we've restored these films, you can't just call them up for, on Netflix and watch them all. There's something fascinating about watching them. You can sort of put yourself inside the frame because you're looking at something happening in real time in one frame. I've just been dying to take a hand crank camera out. As director and head of production, Alice develops the Gaumont house style. Gaumont distributes its films domestically and internationally in both black and white and color versions. YouTube movies are in their infancy in the same way as the Lumieres or Alice's first films. They are no more sophisticated in their grammar and in their filmmaking style. The changes that have taken place in the digital era have been partially about amateur work. We go back to the early part of the 20th century, something similar is going on. Stunts, trained animal acts, trips around the world, acts that are caught on camera function in both YouTube and early cinema as the basic content. One of the ways people are learning it is through mimicking media that exists already. If we go back, it's the last time we underwent a similar revolution. I couldn't believe how long ago that idea already existed and was being recorded. It's not unlike when will the bass drop. The music causes a frenzy amongst the people. Like, oh, this is just a sketch. 
Les premiers étaient les films que vous connaissez, qui, qui étaient des films à épisodes où il fallait toujours un punch, comme vous, oui. vous savez. La, la on, les, on les fait toujours, vous savez. On les fait toujours, oui. Mais enfin, on les fait moins tout de même. Et alors, petit à petit, nous, sommes, euh, nous, nous avons amélioré ça, n'est-ce pas À la 1900 Exposition Universelle, les main attractions incluent une moving sidewalk et motion pictures. Gaumont films sont parmi ceux screened à l'expo, où Alice reçoit son premier award comme collaborateur. The same year, in Brussels, Gaumont gives a technical demonstration of the cinematograph and showcases a selection of the company's successful films. Alice's The Cabbage Fairy is applauded. Alice's competition is Georges Méliès, Ferdinand Zeka, Pate's chief director, and Edwin S. Porter, director at the Edison Company. I'm fascinated by the cameras. I would love to see a lot about the technology. Quand on critique les premiers films, ça me fait toujours mal au cœur parce que si les gens avaient vu dans quelles conditions nous le faisions, n'est-ce pas There were camera problems, film problems, problems with development. There were no schools for movies. What we want to do is find a camera that Alice Guy used. Oh boy. So this is the Pathé. Going to have to be looking through that little cheat window. It's really small and it's upside down. The few times that I'm able to shoot anything on film, and it's a completely different feeling that you have in terms of your engagement with the medium. The shutter seems to have gone out of sync. You can only imagine what Alice Guy must have gone through with that first generation of film cameras. As we can see in this museum, movies and the first attempts to project images on a screen go back hundreds of years. Henri Langlois, who's the man who started the Cinémathèque Française, collected all of these objects. And there used to be a wall-sized photograph. You see her directing. That image is gone. She is mentioned on the wall in the Pâté and Gaumont description as being the first woman filmmaker. These are things that connect directly to her. We never saw this. This is correspondence between Alice and Leon Gaumont and Leon Gaumont's son, Louis. I knew about the Gaumont system, the chronophone. I didn't know that Alice was involved with it. In 1902, Léon Gaumont and Georges Laudet patented their chronophone invention, a system for making films with synchronized sound. The process involves pre-recording the song to a wax disc from which a phonograph record is created. The record is then played back for the performers and they lip sync or dance to the music while their images are captured by a motion picture camera. These films are called phonosyn. The music video exists from the very beginning. Alice Guy clearly was part of that process. Alice Guy and Thomas Edison both made sound films, Edison slightly earlier. Uh, the big difference is that Edison would record the sound live on the set. The actors would yell to the horns to be recorded. Alice Guy pre-recorded the sound. The first appareil parlant que nous avons employé au studio se composait de deux appareils, le phonographe d'un côté, le cinématographe de l'autre, reliés par un dispositif électrique qui en assurait le synchronisme. The footage of her directing, it's amazing to see a woman in command from that time period. It's not just pointing the camera. You have to have a scenario, you have to have music, and then the synchronization with the chronophone. I mean, all of these things she mastered. And so in a way, Alice is a pioneer in the film musical. Alice works with the biggest stars of opera and dance. Other phonocent are made on location in Madrid, Granada, and Barcelona, where Alice and her cameraman, Anatole Tiberville, also shoot documentaries of famed sites. going around Spain at that time required quite a lot of courage for a woman alone. She had a cameraman along with her. She was not completely alone. I wouldn't say she was fearless, but she was not fearful. 
The Gaumont Company's success enables them to expand production and build a new studio near the Parc des Boutchements. Gaumont's studio was unique and it was the biggest studio stage in the world. The studio was, is very systematically organized. Shooting took place on the second level. Below, via a trap door, you could lower and raise the sets. So the sets could be made separately from the shooting stage. And this is the architectural version of the systematization of filmmaking that would lead to the classical Hollywood model. Alice produces and directs the first film shot in the new studio, La Esmeralda, based on Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Alice purchases scripts and runs weekly production meetings. She hires and trains Etienne Arnaud and Louis Feuillade as writers and directors, and adds set designer Henri Menussier. Alice continues to write and direct her own takes on fashion, children, parenthood, including one about child abuse, comedies of seduction, and a variety of chase films. Several of these films reveal techniques she learned at Gaumont from her mentor, Frédéric Dillet. He told me how we could take the characters further or more ready to make them small and grand. We found, for example, the way to turn the film to the side. I don't think it was her direction of children that was really remarkable. I don't think it was the role she wrote for children, because nobody else was doing that. One of my favorites, uh, Gamekeeper's Son, the guns and the knives, I was tense watching it, afraid for the kid. The father died it was heartbreaking. And that she could tell that kind of story in four or five minutes and get you at the edge of your seats was incredible. She was the first great comic director. Most of her comedies have just absolute, perfect comic timing. Madame's Cravings was so unusual because it's so rare to see pregnancy in a movie. She grabs a fish from a homeless guy and is eating it. She steals the absinthe from a cafe goer. She's so bad, this lady. She was really funny, and she knew how to film funny. The timing on the drop of mattress is really astonishing. Her sense of choreography, the silent stillness of that mattress, and the fact that it's then going to be very mobile is very important. Whoever that was who kept picking up the mattress, she get an Academy Award. I didn't yeah. see anybody fall down so much. Here is this woman who, as a girl, was raised in a convent. And she's making these tremendously raunchy films. The sticky woman, the maid, is licking stamps. Her mouth becomes very sticky. This man is watching, and he's getting more and more excited. And excited because this woman is licking things. Having seen a, just a few of Alice Key's films, she had a great sense of humor. The consequences of feminism, I think, is very witty. It's a satirical comment on male fear of feminism. Still to this day, I've never seen anything like that, where she has women in women's clothes and men in men's clothes. These men are acting as women and the women are acting as men, and it's revolutionary. It's almost like she's saying, right, imagine what it's like to be in our situation. But then there's a bit of self-mockery in it, too. It's ageless. It's a wonderful idea, and uh, she made it first. She must have had a huge influence. Sergei Eisenstein is one of the pioneers who formed cinema. Betoshi Pochomkin made him famous in the world you send me this film.
and I recognized Eisenstein's description from his memoirs. The women rebelled. They began to frequent cafes, talk politics, smoke cigars, while their husbands sat at home doing the washing. Eisenstein was eight years old, and at that time, it was forbidden for children to see such a film. This moment was important for him. This film is the main film he mentioned. Eisenstein showed, I think, also in style a little bit of Alice Guy in his film October. How she makes this ironical image of male-female. And thanks to you, you gave us the director of this film and the title and the role of her film in his life and his education, his formation as a director. Today, we're going to look at some of the locations that have been identified of films made by Alice Guy in the vicinity of the studios where she worked and around the Parc de Butchermont. My colleagues are descendants, one descendant of Leon Gaumont and another descendant of Alice Guy and... And a passerby. And a passerby. We are going to visit locations on the Rue Compagne, which is a location for an Alice Guy film called Le Lit à Roulette, The Rolling Bed. The bed rolls down this hill, and in the following shot, we see it further up the street, also rolling down the hill. We're on a location for an Alice Guy film called The Drunken Mattress, Matelas Epileptique. This is a bridge over the Rue de Crimée, and it's used for a gag where the mattress falls from the bridge into the street below. This is a location for two LSD films, the drunken mattress and the rolling bed. But one of the entrances to the Parc de Butte Chaumont, which is used as a location in one of Alice the four-year-old heroine, the heroine comes up these stairs and catches two thieves robbing a man, and she foils their evil ways and is rewarded by the police. J'ai fait ma passion, qui a été mon plus grand film en France. Alice uses the Tissot Bible as reference material for her largest production to date, The Passion. She hires assistant director Victorin Jassé and creates 25 episodes with about 300 extras. James Tissot created this series of watercolors illustrating the life of Christ. They were published and called the Tissot Bible. It was very, very popular. Elise Guy Blachet must have been among the first and used those illustrations as guidance. What you see in her film is amazing. There are some very early special effects. We did a trick on Superman Returns that reminded me of the Jesus thing. We dropped the camera like this following her. We still do things that way. The only difference nowadays, we can do it with tools that make the change more seamless. During production, some of the sets are destroyed by one of her crew members. Reconstructing them causes the film to go over budget, putting Alice's position in jeopardy. Board member Gustave Eiffel comes to her defense. Léon Gaumont screens La Vie du Christ at the Société de Photographie and introduces Alice as the director. Each scene is met with unanimous and enthusiastic applause from the crowd. Her films continue to be successful and she continues to gain recognition. Alice hires Menusier's colleague, art director Ben Carré. I would like to see lots of movie makers knowing her, talking about her. This quote turned up on Google Books about Hitchcock admiring the films of Alice Guy Blachet. It says, I'd be over the moon with the Frenchman Georges Méliès. I was thrilled by the movies of D.W. Griffith and the early French director Alice Guy. I'm not surprised that any director that looked at Alice Guy films, their first thought was, well, what can I rip off? Various companies adapt the same source material for their films. To identify ownership, they place their logos on the sets. The Gaumont Company's logo includes a flower and the word LG, Léon Gaumont's initials. According to production designer Ben Carré, script theft was common. One day, Alice called the director into her office and gave him a script to read. The director told Mademoiselle Alice, the script is identical to the film I saw last night. Everybody stole from everybody. You meet someone, apparently by accident, who works at Gaumont, take him out, you get him a little drunk, and you say, how would you like to learn a little extra money? 
And the actors would run across town to the competing film company and say, they just made a movie about this and I was in it. Alice adds powder to the scripts to detect fingerprints and begins locking scripts in her desk drawer. They start to disappear and through her detective work, she discovers the culprit, a young boy working as night janitor in the Gaumont studio. They were always Gaumont first, Pathé imitation. I was surprised to see that the script was similarly structured to a modern day film. Really cool to see. It was good to finally actually shoot something. I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but neither did Alice. In 1906, Guy meets British-born Herbert Blaché Bolton. He had just arrived from the Gaumont London branch to study camera technology. Alice's cameraman, Tiberville, becomes ill. Gaumont sends Herbert to the south of France in his place to shoot Mireille. Written by Louis Fillade and directed by Alice Guy. During filming, a romance begins. When the film wraps, Alice returns to Paris and Herbert heads to Gaumont's Berlin division as manager. The Mireille footage shot by Herbert, the cameraman, is found to be unusable. Léon Gaumont sends Alice to Berlin to demonstrate the chronophone system. Nos clients avaient quelquefois des difficultés. Alors, Gaumont était ennuyé, il ne pouvait pas y aller. Il m'a dit, allez-y. Mais j'ai dit, mais je ne parle pas l'allemand. Moi, je ne connais pas l'allemand du tout. Herbert assists her as a translator in their travels throughout Germany, where she troubleshoots the chronophone for Gaumont clients. Nous ne sommes pas mariés à ce moment-là, mais il m'a demandé. À ce moment-là, je lui dis, écoutez, moi, j'ai besoin de réflexion. Je ne savais pas, j'avais pas très envie de quitter la France. Enfin, j'avais pas très envie d'épouser un Anglais, surtout ça. Mais les Anglais, ils sont pas très sympathiques. <laughs> by Christmas, they are engaged. Gaumont is surprised by the engagement, as he already planned on sending Herbert to Cleveland, Ohio, to assist with the promotion of the chronophone. Et au moment de partir, Gaumont m'a dit, je... enfin, vous me quittez comme ça, ça m'embarrasse énormément. Qu'est-ce que je... je vais aller chez Pathé chercher Je lui ai dit, pourquoi chez Pathé Vous avez Feuillade, un excellent metteur en scène. According to production designer Ben Carré, a poetic director wrote a farewell address to Mademoiselle Alice. Vous avez fait fleurir la Marguerite LG. You have made the Gaumont Company. Blue. The Blaché Boltons arrive in New York. Herbert is listed as 28, Alice is 30. In reality, she is 33 years old, and he is 24. Herbert, representing the Clonophon patent, works with American entrepreneurs for nine months in Cleveland, Ohio, but the venture fails. Gaumont est venu, il a acheté ce petit studio à Flushing, à Long Island. Il voulait faire du parlant, justement, du chant, etc. Et il en a chargé mon mari. The Blachés live in Flushing, where Simone is born. The Gaumont synchronized sound pictures feature popular American songs and vaudeville numbers. Herbert hires Lois Weber, known as Mrs. Smalley, to appear in Gaumont's singing and talking pictures. Although Madame Blaché is no longer a Gaumont employee, she directs a few of the Gaumont pictures. Later, under Madame Blaché's supervision, Mrs. Smalley is given the opportunity to write and direct. Lois Weber becomes the first American female director. Alice's former production designer, Menessier, visits her at her home. Alice shares that she advised Gaumont to imitate Pathé and make American movies, but he was not interested. I am a woman of activity. I still want to work, and I think I can make money. If I do something, will you join me? J'ai loué une partie, et de ce studio, à Flashing, où j'ai commencé à faire du film. Alice found Solax and is its president. Among Madame Blaché's comedies are Mixed Pets, Cupid and the Comet, and When Marion Was Little. People like Alice, who is a shrewd businesswoman and a shrewd artist, they have the opportunity to make a small fortune. 
que j'avais comme assistant un ancien officier qui connaissait très bien l'armée. Nous avons fait beaucoup de films cowboy pour commencer. C'était la grande mode à ce moment-là. When Solex got really successful, they went from one production a week to three. She had to hire assistant directors. One of them was Melville, who had a military background. He had access to ships, guns, and cavalry. Menessier recalled, first she would direct a scene with Melville. He was clever, but not as fast as she was. She would make the best ones. I'm curious to see how that works, being a working mom. Then. My mother was constantly away from home. Myself and my brother were often left with governesses. I didn't know that there were other experiences where mothers could be with you all the time. Solak's films are a success. To meet the increased demand, she hires additional directors and creates a stable of actors known as the Solax Players. Gaumont distributes Solax films outside of the U.S. Hi, you've reached the Seymour. Leave a message after the beat. Hi, I wasn't sure if this is the right Seymour's. I'm looking for Michelle Seymour. This is Michelle. You're Michelle Seymour and you're related to the pins. I am. This is a, a weird phone call. That's okay. I've had weirder. We are working on a documentary about the first female director. Okay. Her name was Alice Guy Blaché. And I was looking through her address book. There's a Charles Pin. Pin. Yes, and then Robert Ivy. and Ivy Pin. That's my parents and my grandfather. My grandfather was a cameraman. He was a cameraman? Yes, that's probably how they knew each other. Did you guys save any of the papers? My grandfather was from France. I can look it up on Ancestry.com. My cousin Kathy, she might know everything. Well, why don't we conference her in? She's in Missouri. Kathy, it's Michelle Seymour. Pamela, who is also on the phone, is doing a documentary on Alice Gabler Shea. And apparently she knew Grandpa. I'm hoping that you can help her with questions. So is there another cousin we should bug? Um, her sister, but I'm telling you she knows the most. Let's bug her anyway. That would be Jackie. Hey, Jack, I'm on a conference call with Pamela, who is doing a documentary on a particular woman, and apparently she worked with Grandpa. They're looking for any information. Now, Jackie and Kathy are a little bit older than I am. My cousin, their sister, and I grew up almost like sisters. Oh, my God, you guys are multiplying. <laughs> yeah, well, you call one, you call us all. He might have been her cameraman. We're not 100% sure, but we're checking. We just found a poster of one of the films, and your grandfather is in there. Oh, my gosh. And the whole thing's out of focus. I think we should abandon this camera and find a different one. There's two cranks for the tripod head. There's one crank for the camera. There's two lenses and a pair of magazines. Everything in there he's going to need. And now that we have the camera and we feel pretty confident, we should restage, redo one of Alice's single shot films. Fort Lee is close in New York City. Fort Lee is up on a large stone bluff, the Palisades. It was full of farmhouses, open fields. Herbert and Alice buy this land in Fort Lee. It's announced Solax is going to move to this new property. Et nous avons fait bâtir. Mais naturellement, ça a pris un certain temps. While the studio is being built, pregnant with her second child, Alice continues to make films in Flushing with divisive subjects. A man's a man, the making of an American citizen, and the strike confront anti-Semitism, immigration, and labor conflict. Did you watch her do that? Yes, I had watched her. Mm -hmm. And what was she like uh, when she was directing? 
She was a bit authoritarian. She was so in ordinary life. So she would have been so as a director. Her English was not good. So it was an added difficulty in her profession. She tried to understand the people who worked with her and to work with them to get a better result. So you said she had trouble speaking English. Did she try to explain to them what she wanted or show them? She certainly did. They had a number of good laughs at her expense that she didn't mind. At the age of 38, Alice gives birth to Reginald. All these Hollywood studios have their roots in Fort Lee, New Jersey, which then was Hollywood version 1.0. You had uh, Eclair, World, and Fox. This was Universal Studios. You have right here a Solak studio with Alice Gee. We have Paramount because Artcraft had their roots here, deal with Adolf Zucker. And Alice is right there in the beginning with all these major studios. Fort Lee in the early teens must have been amazing. There is this European flux of filmmakers. It's a very quickly changing industry. Funeral homes are taken over in the evening and seats are put down and sheets put up. Then more and more theaters began to be built. It became big business. These are the ones that say select. There's a woman, a nurse, and my grandfather. That's Alice, isn't it? Now I can't tell. Oh, yes, it is her! That's your grandfather? Now we know who it is. That's Alice's mom. That's the children. There is a lot of them in all different ages. Oh my God. Why would he have these pictures? So they must have been close. How are we connected? This is definitely a relative of Alice's. We have Julia, Henriette, Marguerite. I think my grandfather's mother's name was Margaret or Marguerite. Marguerite, that's it. You're related to Alice. You're related to the first female director. <laughs> this is crazy. OK, when are we coming over? The New York Dramatic Mirror reports she stands as the dominant figure in a motion picture studio, which she organized and built. She draws an income from fifty to $60,000 annually. Waste has always been a terrifying word to me, and it's one of the greatest crimes. I had had experience in the picture business. I knew it thoroughly, and it seemed a shame not to put my knowledge to some good advantage when there was so much room. The article concludes, a biography of Madame Blaché will someday be written for everyone to read the details of her simple, fortunate life. As Madame Blaché's storytelling evolves, so do her camera techniques and tricks, including double exposures, split screens, and special effects. Her stories also feature exotic animals and live rats. I love watching the, the stuff that you showed me of Alice. It shows a rebelliousness, creativity. You gotta learn a lot of stuff to get to her level. The way she uses space and movement, that's stuff that when I watch, I'm like, I gotta pick that up. It stands the test of time. Alice's former production designer, Monessier, recalled Alice training editors. In the evening, when everyone left, she edited her films and made the titles all herself. Matrimony Speed Limit is a great example of editing. His aunt dies and leaves him a lot of money if he gets married by noon on the 18th. He's thinking about his love and then cut to this photo of her. He realizes that he's running out of time. Near in a wide shot, she cuts into him standing by the clock. Visually, she's saying, look, there's something to be said here. As her filmmaking and the craft changes, her camera starts to move more. She's cutting more. She's using a lot of different angles. They're no longer two-minute stories that are told just within a particular location or scene. Alice. So that's what I thought her name was, Tante Alice, not knowing that it was Aunt Alice. My grandfather lost his mother. He was sent away to a boarding school. His father came at Christmas laden with gifts and probably stayed an hour at the most. So my grandfather was devastated. He just wanted somebody to love him. I think that's why he's so close to Alice, why she meant so much to him. Well, Grandpa saved everything. We're humanizing this woman. I'd like to see a really nice tour through her studio. The New York Dramatic Mirror reports, 
The ground floor contains President Flaché's office, the sales and publicity department, scenario and shipping department, together with the projecting room and laboratories. Half of the second floor is the studio proper, and the other half frame scene and property rooms. There's space for five ordinary sets or three deep ones, also a camera platform for trick work. The dressing rooms are on the third floor with the director's offices, wardrobes, and art departments. In the studio above the stage is Madame Blaché's sign for her actors that reads, Be Natural. Et j'avais mis dans mon studio des notes partout. Soyez naturel. C'est tout ce que je leur demandais. <laughs> Be natural is everything, I think, for, for an actor. It's one of the most sort of palpable things about her work. You go into these households, you get a feel for people very, very quickly. She has a love of people, love of the world she inhabits. She didn't want it to be artificial. She wanted it to feel real. So you have this element of truth, and then you build a rounded fiction. It's actually more naturalistic, and, and to me, it's harder to achieve that. Many of Alice's Solax westerns and military films have women acting and leading and empowering roles. The acting and the scope of what she's shooting are all very similar to the way we're used to seeing movies. And they were beautiful, artistic shots. The actresses were incredible, all the physical stuff they were doing. Total confidence. She becomes aware of sexual inequality and put that in her films and try and upset the expectation about what the difference in the sexes is. Little Trixie hears that her sister will die before the last leaf falls and takes it upon herself to extend her sister's life by attaching fallen leaves onto a tree. We catch a glimpse of a little girl, and why does our heart go out to her? Because it's pure, it's uncluttered, it's not filtered. Alice is a genuine storyteller. They're films about fragments of life, and you realize watching her film how little has changed. I had been asked to work with a group that was publicizing the first film with an all African American cast. I think the film is definitely of its time. I can't say that it was entirely progressive, but at that time it might have been regarded differently. Regardless of its intention, it was still you know, historic in nature and important because it had the black cinematic image, um, which was an image that before hadn't been seen in this way. The Fool and His Money, that's a very interesting film. He's just a fool to his friends and the people he knows. And then he finds a wallet full of money he buys the expensive car, and then he drives by the house, and then he drives by again. And then everybody wants him because he has money, and then, of course, he loses his money, and nobody wants him anymore. I think there was a story that appealed to her. We don't know a lot about the background. The French newspaper Cine Journal reports, Madame Blaché's A Fool and His Money features James Russell, the king of the cakewalk, and his troop. When Madame Blaché informed her white stars that each would be paired with a black player, they refused considering it would be an irreversible dishonor to be coupled with people of color. The article concludes, such is the state of racial prejudice in free America. A Fool and His Money now features an all-black cast. It's impressive that anyone can make a movie, even in this day and age, but to do it against all odds and to be so ahead of her time in her thinking is mind-blowing. Herbert's term at Gaumont ends, and Alice appoints him president of Solax to handle the finances and deal-making. Within months, Herbert founds Blaché Features, the Blachés direct and produce using the Solax resources. Well, Herbert's an interesting character. Why would he all of a sudden decide, I'm going to do my own productions. I want to be a director, too. At the same time she's doing it, in the same studio, two different production companies, he's a director now. A house divided. It's the one I like the most. In A House Divided, husband and wife, separated, live under the same roof and communicate through written notes. 
all the women, all these uppity women, the typists who were so impudent, and the cook, they were in charge. And I feel this is Alice Guy Blachet. She had to write and make that film. Madame Blachet writes for the moving picture world about a woman's place in film production. There is nothing connected with the staging of a motion picture that a woman cannot do as easily as a man. And there's no reason why she cannot completely master every technicality of the art. An economic depression in the U.S. and the beginning of World War I create financial difficulties for the Blachets, and they begin to work for other companies. The old ways of making movies wasn't working anymore. You have much more of a division of labor. You need to get many more productions going at once. Everything became much more business oriented. And the idea that you were an artist and a craftsman, no. Then you add the layer on top of that of the trust. Thomas Edison pulls together Eastman Kodak and eight production companies. And the deal is nobody can buy an Edison camera or the film without being part of the trust. Alice and Solax, along with Universal, Fox, and everybody who wanted to make a movie had to join or pay royalties to this trust. Basically, you have to pay a huge licensing fee or be an independent, in which case it's very hard to exist. Edison casts such a shadow on the industry that he drives people out of the East Coast to the West Coast because they can't do business with him legally. They've got to do it as far away, cheaply, profitable, and that's why California works. The Ocean Waif, a William Randolph Hearst feature starring Doris Kenyon and Carlisle Blackwell, is directed by Madame Blachet. What impressed me was the modernity. It's always in movement, that there is a violence in the relationships. It's very clever, with expressions so subtle, nothing overplayed. It's really a sophisticated story. Madame Blachet and social activist Rose Pastor Stokes write Shall the Parents Decide, a screenplay about Planned Parenthood. The film was set to premiere at birth control advocate Margaret Sanger's clinic opening, but was unrealized. It would have been wonderful if she premiered her film at Margaret's clinic. Of course, Margaret was arrested the minute the clinic opened. We're still in a battle for Planned Parenthood. Empress, it's really well done. The composition is really something. She's a wonderful director, and it's obvious that she knows what is happening on the set, everything. She knows about props, art direction, costumes, acting, lights, and she's controlling everything. Madame Blachet lectures on filmmaking and screenwriting, and shows some of her films at Columbia University. When she gave this lecture, she did not understand why women could not direct. Men have a kind of brotherhood. There's some progress, but it's hardly worth mentioning. Vous n'avez jamais eu d'ennui en Amérique. Les seuls ennuis que j'ai eu en Amérique, c'est avec des maisons françaises. Est-ce que euh, le fait que vous étiez une femme, la première femme cinéaste, ne vous a pas fait des difficultés? Une femme à cette époque-là, c'était inhabituel de faire un métier d'homme. Non. Là, au contraire, là-bas, j'ai eu des gens qui m'ont offert des fonds. Pour... Et en France? Oh, en... en France, pas du tout, voilà. <rire> the Blachets begin to rent the Solax Studios to other companies. My father's marriage was going to part. Things were not going well at all. Herbert leaves his family and goes to Hollywood. He takes Catherine Calvert, who had worked with him and his wife, and she became Herbert's mistress. Alice moves with the children to New York City. Alice writes to Herbert, thank you for your letter. I finished shooting my film and I'm going to start editing. The children are doing well. Sincerely, Alice Blachet. She adds, 
I have learned since your departure that you lived with Mrs. Smalley, your mistress. I'm warning you that I'm going to take legal action against this woman because I wish to at least give respect to my name and that of my children. She found it humorous to ask me, is this Madame Blachet? She will learn that I am indeed Madame Blachet. Herbert Blachet is a confirmed womanizer. Most women would think, oh, well, to hell with Herbert, but she needed him at her side, even though he contributed nothing creatively. Father had speculated on the market, shares of airplanes. When the war ceased, those shares fell to nothing. And he lost $40,000 at the time, yeah. which was a big blow. And so they could not, um, they couldn't continue. Solax, already in debt, loses one of its buildings due to a fire. Movie columnist Luella Parsons announces that Madame Blachet has been hired to direct a series of films, including tarnished reputations. During filming, Madame Blachet contracts influenza. Herbert sees his wife's deteriorating health and invites Alice and the children to Los Angeles. They live separately. Herbert hires Alice as directing assistant on his two films starring Ala Nazimova. Alice's final film in the US, Tarnished Reputations, opens on Broadway. Herbert begins to work for Universal as director and producer. I would love to know more about her personal life, and I'm sure it was not easy. My mother was extremely French, extremely 19th century. I don't want to go into this. This is awful. I'll turn off the camera. OK. My father's disaffection and the fact that all he wanted at that time seemed to be a variety of women. They were no longer working in harmony, and the job they had demanded harmony. The business is bankrupt. The remains of the Solax plant and its furnishings have been auctioned. And Alice, now divorced, moves back to France with her children. Hey, Pamela. We have a little show and tell. You have the perfect hands to show us with the perfect manicure. You know what? I'm a Jersey girl. You have to have it. These are letters from Alice. Oh my God. She signed it, Tanta Alice. Usually it's M. G. Alice's mother. This is 1924 and it is Marie. Wow, she was really close with your grandfather. Alice was busy. And what's darkness to us is from 1922 on. So these are very important. Living in Nice, she applies for directing and management positions, but is unsuccessful in getting hired. Alice writes to her lawyer about taking Herbert to court unless he pays her the overdue alimony. He has debts, so do I. People don't want to hire white-haired women. After living in America, I am forgotten. Marie writes to her grandson, Charles Pin. Our poor Alice. Once in a while, she has thrown a few dollars, like you would throw a dog a bone. She finds absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing in the movie business after thousands of requests. Large investment firms, they want to get into the business because they see the potential for huge profits. Alice would have no chance. Wall Street money comes in the front door, women are forced out the back door. These women involved in production, they get shoved out. Five films directed by Herbert Blachet are released. Simone is looking for a job using her stenography skills, Marie tells Charles. Regis thinks French is hard and doesn't have his sister's intelligence. They've been living on the jewelry. Next will be the furniture. Luella Parsons writes about the need for more women film directors. Paramount is proud of its only woman director, Dorothy Arzner, who, with Lois Weber, is the only woman to achieve fame as a director. Of course, there was Madame Blachet, but we haven't heard of her in years. The 
1920s, the great American word was prosperity. Now the 30s have begun and there is a new word, depression. Elise writes, I have learned from Monsieur you intend to make sound films in your niece studio. Please, Monsieur Gaumont, life is getting harder. I need a job. The history of the Gaumont Company is published with Gaumont's film production beginning in 1906. Alice is not mentioned. Alice and Simone move to Paris. Simone works for United Artists and Fox as a secretary and begins to support her mother. Le Temps newspaper publishes Alice's corrections to an article featuring Germaine Dulac and Dorothy Arzner as the first female film directors. She is the first female film director, and to her knowledge, Mrs. Smalley is the first American female film director. One of the things that would be very interesting is to look at how film history has been written and what her interactions with those people was. Victor Bashi was a film historian in Brussels in the 60s who happened to have Alice Guy as his neighbor. He recognized that this was a piece of history that was very important and needed to be added to the historical record. Victor Bashi is my grandfather. Under the table, he's got the tape recorder, you see it? Yes. He's recording her. Where is it? The machine. Well, the machine, I don't care about. I care about the tapes. <laughs> Historian Theodore Huff's documentary features the remains of Fort Lee Movie Studios, crediting only Herbert Blachet for Solax. Alice works for the Société Parisienne d'édition and writes stories, novelizes films, and does translations for its journals. About 30 of her articles are published. Dear Madame, I would like to give you an assignment on our beginnings in the film industry. You are the most qualified. Alice meets with Gaumont. He later sends her his notes and a list of Gaumont films. I was surprised to see I directed so many films. But in the list you sent, films I directed were credited to Fayad. I have not started the technical part of the assignment, but I'm almost done with the anecdotal part. I hope you will like it. Gaumont thanks her for her work. I suggest we use these notes for the second edition of the Gaumont History. Nazi threats rise to a scream. The children are evacuated from the fear of war. <laughs> I told you. Yes, it is true. You want to listen? No? Je suis arrivé à Paris complètement ruiné. Simone works in Paris for the American Embassy and later is transferred with other personnel to Vichy. A black day for France as the conquering Nazis entered the fallen, silent city of Paris. Leon Gaumont writes, A journalist and photographer visited me. I shared your notes. May I give them your address in case they would like to meet? The article will be in the Revue Sept Jours. Best wishes to you and your charming daughter, and above all, good health from your old boss. Alice writes, your journalists can see me, but my documents are in storage in Paris. When I talk about my career in France, they look at me suspiciously. I will enjoy seeing my name mentioned for the first time among the pioneers of Gaumont. The Revue Sejour article is published without mention of Elise. Simone's job takes her to Bern, Switzerland. Elise accompanies her. Nous avons d'ailleurs fait une partie de cours hier à votre sujet. J'espère que vous ne m'avez pas prêté un film qui m'aurait pile chaque fois en me le prêt. C'est les méfaits d'une tête de veau. Mais c'est Georges Sadoul, il n'y a rien du cinéma qui vous le prête. Alors, Georges Sadoul was the big, 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 big name in the cinema of France. He was a French journalist, film critic, who wrote the first intellectual book on the history of the cinema. 
You can criticize George Sadoul for not interviewing her, but historians are not interested in interviews. All they want is written documentation. She was ignored by official historians. Uh, nobody knew as many things as we know now. Wrongs of people hailed the end of the war in Europe. Leon Gaumont writes to Elise, I have had a happy end of life. I thank all my collaborators. You are one of the most important ones whom I truly held in highest esteem. Léon Gaumont dies. The new chapter of the Gaumont history, written by Alice Guy Blachet and Léon Gaumont, is not published. Alice lectures on her filmmaking at high schools and women's clubs. Jean Sadou's The Pioneers of Cinema is published, crediting Alice as head of Gaumont's productions, directing narrative films, purchasing scenarios, and the director of Misadventures of a Calf's Head. He credits Alice's former assistant director, Jassé, for The Passion and Esmeralda, and actor Henri Gallet for The Cabbage Fairy. Reginald, living in the U.S., marries Roberta Myers. Alice writes, Roberta, dear, you have great illusions on my very modest self. I've made a lot of pictures, probably very few masterpieces, if any. In a career of almost 20 years, I accumulated anecdotes and souvenirs and can interest and amuse people. I could even, if I was patient enough, write my life. But what for? I'm an old philosopher now. Previously, at the head of the Gaumont Company, I think I was responsible for a good part of the success of the pictures department. But in France, especially in that time, and more especially for women, I had to fight hard to keep my rank. Well, I want to know how somebody loses their films. Alice Guy, of course, she made so many films, and because it's pre-World War I, a lot of material was dismantled and also decomposed. There's a small community of collectors uh, who basically hold the secret of silent films. Los Angeles, Charlie Tabak sold films. Among them were films by Alice Guy Blachet. I got Officer Henderson in 1964. I paid $13.25 for the print. When I started collecting her films, his double, a house divided, burst up Holmes murder case, matrimony speed limit, and the girl in the armchair. You didn't know that Alice was looking for her films? No. Most of your stuff is from Charlie Tarbox. Yeah. Did he leave anything behind? I have the impression that you never heard of Charlie Tarbox before. No. I would suggest that you look him up. The American Embassy transfers Simone to Washington, D.C. Alice joins her. Léon Gaumont's son, Louis, writes to Alice about a book he is writing about his father. He sends her Gaumont materials with questions. Dear Louis, your father always found solutions to difficult problems. He liked order. If I am organized, it is thanks to him. He let me concentrate exclusively on directing as the business expanded. These documents I'm providing may only be valuable to us, but I urge you to return them. Alice Guy Blachet. Historians René Jeanne and Charles Ford's History of Cinema is published crediting Alice for The Cabbage Fairy, The Passion, and Misadventures of a Calf's Head. Oui, oui, ça, je sais. Jean Mitry vient encore de sortir une chronologie. Je ne connais pas. Il parle de vous pour la première fois en 1899. Oh, non. Il dit Henri Gallet Deuxième metteur en scène chez Gaumont, premier film, La Paix au Chou. Oh, oh, oh c'est formidable. Voyez-vous, n'est-ce pas combien il y a des erreurs fantastiques, hein? Ah oui, c'est faux, faux, faux. Dear Louis, before the studio was built, all the films made on the terrace were directed by me. 
the Cabbage Ferry photo was taken after filming, I put on the peasant clothes as a joke. Those are my friends, Germaine and Yvonne Serrand. I only claim the title of the first female director that I alone was entitled to for 17 years. Alice writes, I'm not sure why the Cabbage Ferry is listed in 1902 and why a few of my films are missing from the catalog. The Cabbage Ferry, probably shot in 60 millimeter, was the first scene shot on that same terrace in 1896. The film is not available anymore. I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing if it had survived all these years. It's not a merit to have been the first. Moi, ce que je peux dire, c'est que dans tout ce que j'ai affirmé, j'ai été honnête et je n'ai pas essayé de prendre ce qui appartenait à quelqu'un d'autre. Ça veut pas donner ma parole. Louis explains to Alice why some of her films may not be listed in the catalogues. Dear Madame, first the format of your first films had become commercially unusable, and some of the first film negatives could have been destroyed by inexperienced personnel. She didn't have a royalty on those films that she made, just salaries. You didn't even have your name on the film, but much less royalty. The fact that she started in 1896 or 1902, basically, doesn't mean much. Alice Guy was of crucial importance when cinema began. The crucial thing is to see the films. But it's not easy to see. One has to be involved in the world of archives. Ah, there it is, Alice Guy Plaché's High Cost of Living. Well, still smells pretty good. Uh, this is nitrate. Nitrate film lasted such a long time because the silver in the nitrate gave the film a luminosity that filmmakers liked. Nitrate is so flammable that once it's ignited, it will burn underwater and the fumes will kill you. Most nitrate films are very distressed. Either they are projection copies that were shown a lot or they were not stored properly and parts decompose and then you have to cut those parts out. There are fire regulations, so only large archives can store the material. Alice flies to the U.S. to search for her films and stays with Reginald, Roberta, and their young daughter, Adrian. Yesterday, an exciting day, Roberta came with me to the Museum of Modern Art. I was seen by the big boss of the film library. The head librarian brought me many publications. And finally, in the catalog of copyright, I found quite a few films. They recommended I go to the Library of Congress. Here I am at the Library of Congress. Finally, an old clerk brings the same catalogs I had already found in New York. Yesterday, I worked on my memoirs. I wonder if I'm doing all of this for nothing. C'est vous qui l'avez fait. Oui. Parce que je crois qu'il y a euh, une erreur dans l'histoire du cinéma. Oui, on, on a pris, que, on a dit que c'était Jassé qui l'avait fait. Qui était votre assistant. As one of the few surviving pioneers of early cinema, Alice is contacted by film historians and journalists. She continues to make corrections to their drafts, published articles and books about herself and the history of cinema, including an article by René Jeanne. I read your article about me and other women directors. I didn't know there were so many. It didn't stop Mr. Danielle Blum from crediting Lois Weber as the first important woman producer. You asked me if I knew the stars. I knew them all. Douglas Fairbanks. Mary Pickford was offered to me as an actress. I was in Chaplin's studio during his filming of The Kid. Fiaf invites Alice to its 12th conference. Welcome to the FIAF office. This is the photographic evidence of Alice Guy attending the opening ceremony of the, the Congress. The conference was interesting. Monsieur Lamprecht, Germany's film archive representative, is the extraordinary collector who found a piece of my passion film. He thinks he may have more films of mine. I had the pleasure of meeting Monsieur Sadur, who had credited my films to others. He acknowledged he received the information by hearsay, promised to correct these errors, and took notes while I was speaking. Mr. Longlois said, 
I want to thank Madame Alice Guy Blaché, who honored us by being here. Encouraged by Lombrecht's discovery of her passion film, Alice contacts all the FIAF attendees, asking them to search for her films in their archives. Lomprec surprises her with his finding of the stepmother and the child of the barricade. Alice asks permission to show them at a lecture and then keep them. He agrees to the loan, but denies her request to keep the films. To have like an entire body of work and you have very little left, it's pretty painful. People don't think about even the, le the legacy of their work, often until their old age, and think, oh, why don't I keep a copy of that? There is so much material still out there, we will continue to find more films. Simone is transferred to Brussels. Alice follows. Malheureusement, mes mémoires n'ont pas été publiées. Personne n'est si intéressé. Je ne suis pas sûr. C'est possible. Il y a probablement une certaine résistance du côté de certains éditeurs français parce que il y a certains noms qui seraient peut-être relégués à un plan autre que celui ah, auquel ils se trouvent. Possible. Il y a peut-être des choses qui risqueraient de gêner l'un ou l'autre, mais ça, la vérité doit être faite. Screenwriter Frank Leon Smith responds to an article about Elise. When I worked in the Pate Astra studio in New Jersey, her name was often spoken by my French bosses. They respected her, but also resented a woman succeeding as a writer, director, and producer of movies. I was sent to Madame Blaché's Solax studio. High on one wall, in letters two feet tall, was her mandate, be natural. Her sign was amazing for those times, when the common phrase for acting was posing for pictures. Her sign made me realize movies didn't have to be phony, and neither did I. I'm still thankful to Madame Blaché's sign. The documentary, Before Hollywood There Was Fort Lee, is released. Solax Studio was built by Herbert Blaché near the present entrance to the George Washington Bridge in 1913. You have to write Alice contacts publishers but none agreed to publish her memoirs. Elise is headed back to the US to look for her films and live with her daughter in New Jersey. Until now, she has located two films and a fragment of a third. Elise dies in New Jersey in 1968. Eight years after her death, Elise's memoirs are published in France. For 60 years, I lived with her, so I knew her well. I was asked to write a little piece saying what mother meant to me. Your mother was generous and gifted with a strong dose of energy and youthfulness. Very curious of all new scientific or literary things. Her enthusiasm for life was contagious. For me, she was more than a mother. She was a friend and I owe her the greatest part of happiness left to me. Alice Guy, par Nicole Lise Bernheim et Claire Clouseau. Monsieur Toscan Duplantier, vous êtes le directeur de chez Gaumont. Qui est Alice Guy 
un titre de film. Quelqu'un qui travaille ici, une maison, non, mais je pense pas connaître. Dans la fondation de la Maison Gaumont, elle a fait tous les films. Si vous ouvrez les grandes histoires du cinéma, vous trouvez mention du nom d'Alice Guy. Une femme fort jolie et aussi une femme d'affaires. Elle a resté dans l'ombre parce qu'elle n'a pas fait de choses éclatantes. Elle a fait des choses honnêtes, honorables, sympathiques, mais rien de brillant. Je vois une femme du monde, pas le genre euh, Chanel, qu'elle était vraiment sur le plateau en train de diriger, et en même temps une directrice de production, incapable de vous le dire. C'est une femme qui a très bien compris dès le départ ce qu'était le métier de cinéaste, euh, la conception du scénario, la réalisation, la direction des acteurs. Feuillat lui-même a confirmé que c'était elle qui l'avait engagée, qui l'avait poussé à réaliser. J'ai entendu des choses très contradictoires, et tout le problème est qu'Alice Guy était une femme. Il n'y a pas eu une conspiration parce qu'elle était femme. Il y a peut-être 200 titres sur les archives, les films d'Alice Guy. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez faire de ce fond C'est très complexe, les films étaient dans des copies flammes. Il faut donc les contre dépenser plusieurs milliards d'anciens francs. Euh, où est le revenu Il y a une femme qui a découvert un peu le cinéma. Et puis, il y a un silence qui se fait autour d'elle. C'est absolument intolérable et presque bête de ne pas voir ces films. C'est de ça qu'il faut parler. Je ne suis pas historienne. Non, ah, non, 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 comment c'est pas l'histoire du cinéma That's the thing about history, uh, it, and actually who's telling the story, it's usually defined by the dominant voices. Who is the most important, who is less important, who played the role in the history, and she plays her very important role. Let's show how the Alice Guy movies were wonderful. And by doing this, you will uh, revive the memory of Alice Guy. Boston. It's This film fills an enormous gap in international film history. What will be found is beyond our imagination. How did you find me? She was more than just a talented businesswoman. She was a filmmaker of rare sensitivity with a remarkably poetic eye. You're a detective. Are you Christopher? We're making history right now. You're on a quest to find out about Alice. I know there's more stuff. This was location of Solax here. She was more or less forgotten by the industry that she helped create. We don't want yet another generation to go by without understanding what she has brought to this art, to this technology, to this business. Un film dit mais oublie tout ça, laisse tout ça, jette tout ça au feu. <rire> en tout cas, il faut vous rien acheter, ce serait très crime de jeter. <rire> oui, je crois. Pas pour moi, mais pour... Mais non, pour l'histoire. Pour l'histoire. Puisque déjà vous aussi sortir ce que vous connaissez qui est classique. doing something live. You could put a photography scene in a show and it'd be very similar. We have a lot of anger. We had to let it out somewhere and this was a good place to do it. Yeah. I think it's a very faithful recreation and being able to shoot the same scene is an amazing personal experience.
mademoiselle, madame Alice qui lâchait. Et voilà, 